turn up to a no heating fault on a combi boiler with a plug-in programmer. Whip out the breakdown bible, scroll all the way down to combi systems. At the bottom there's a combi plug-in programmer fault finding flow chart, no heating. There's a programmer display on, yeah check the heating's calling, it's an MT10 so there's no display but you can hear it ticking. It's boiler display and a fault code, no. Go to the PCB, whip the back off, is there 240 on LS. Let's check that, F to LS. Yeah, 240. Go to the room, start remove the cover, is there 240 on one? Yeah. Is there 240 on three? It's not at the moment, turn the room stat up. Should be 240 now to prove the room stat's fine. Is there 240 on LR at the boiler, just to check the cable's not broke? Yeah, 240 on LR. So we replace the plug-in programmer, whip that out, boiler fires, happy days. Right, it's a combi boiler plug-in programmer, hardwired room stat. So this is basically what we just had in that scenario. So switch view spare live neutral earth goes to the boiler and then you've got a live out which is ls and then you've got live return which is lr so when we were checking for 240 on ls we were checking here and that was sending it out we got that so then we go to the room stat we were checking on one which was 240 so we were proving we were getting it from here to here so the cable was fine and then i made the switch and then we checked it on three so that was them proving this to check that the room stat was okay. And then when we check back on LR to make sure we got 240 on LR, we are proving that the cable from the room stat to the boiler was okay, no breaks in it. And because we were getting the complete loop at 240, that's when we then knew that it was the programmer at fault because the, the d voltage was coming back, but the plug-in programmer has the ultimate say. So although it was getting the feedback to fire, it just didn't want to fire, so as soon as I whipped the plug-in programmer out, the boiler then began to fire.